Nice Christmas tree, Tiago. It's beautiful, isn't it? Getting ready for Christmas already. <laughs> All right, good morning, good afternoon, uh, whatever it may be, depending on where you are on this planet. This is our platform backend update for February 27th. Uh, for anyone watching at home uh, the recording, I'm Dao Man. I am platform backend lead at GitLab. And now I'm going to try to share my screen. I think that means that I won't be able to see any of the cameras anymore. So I'm going to need you guys to um, shout if anything breaks. Let me see, where did my presentation go? Okay, can someone please confirm that the presentation is visible to you? Yep. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, all right. So these presentations happens one happen one happen. Wow, uh, I'm tired. Sorry. These presentations happen once every five weeks. So to start, let's go through the last five weeks. Uh, one change process-wise that we introduced in the last five weeks was to do a feature freeze on the 7th, two weeks before the uh, release of 8.17.0 on the 22nd, which means we had about two weeks to focus on uh, getting regressions fixed before release instead of after and patch releases like we often did when we were still merging new stuff into the release two, three, four days before. Uh, and of course, a lot of those things also introduced issues that we weren't aware of soon enough. But that's a major change for the last five weeks. Um, of course, we released GitLab 8.17 with a number of these regression fixes and also a couple of um, notable mentions that I've listed here. I'm sure you've all seen the retrospective or at least read the GitLab blog post, uh, GitLab 8.17 blog post. I'm not going to go over these in detail, um, but these are the major efforts that we as backend uh, platform were working on. So now what are we going to work in the next five weeks? First, we will have uh, Bob van Landuit, a new developer from Belgium, joining us on March 6th. It might actually be 7th, maybe I messed it up, but at least one of those few days of March. Uh, he used to work with Tone before. They worked at a company in Belgium, and now they both decided to join GitLab. So it's going to be great to, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be great for them to be reunited, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy to have him join the team. Um, second, we will likely start using separate milestones for development and the release, uh, which is something that I proposed last week and that has been discussed in some issues uh, but I think that at this point we have come to a conclusion that is not too um, controversial because initially I in, uh, proposed moving the actual release from the 22nd to the 14th which was as I could have expected met with some uh, some doubts but we will probably split up the milestones in the next five weeks probably for 9.1 um, on the 22nd, we will release GitLab 9.0 with first exporting issues as CSV. This is something that customers, for whatever reason, are really excited about. Um, I think spreadsheets, well, if you really want your issues in a spreadsheet, that in indicates that to do what you want to do I and mean, need to improve GitLab, but this is something that keeps coming back as a feature request, so we're going to do it. Um, there's been a bug in GitLab for ages where if you delete a user, it will also delete all of their issues and all of their comments and everything. Um, so it's a hard delete, which means that some really you know, useful issues and merge requests and whatever are now gone. This is something that's also going to be fixed with 9.0. Instead of deleting all of these issues, they will be assigned to a new ghost user that is used for all deleted issues. Um, so that we don't lose that valuable information. Of course, you know, the connection between the original author and that issue will be, you know, lost. So if someone wants to remove their, um, you know, their trace on GitLab, they can do it like this and no one will know anymore that they author those issues. Uh, third, we are going to ship impersonation tokens. This is a feature that was requested by a big uh, prospect. And the idea is that in some cases they have automations like systems, machines that need to act as if they were a certain user. Right now, the only way to do that is using the API is to um, authenticate as an admin account and then pass a header that says, I want to act as this user. But that means that this, this, this machine or this CI build or whatever that needs to act as the user needs to have access to an actual admin account from GitLab. And of course, the admin account's API token is incredibly powerful and you don't want to just you know, put it on the machine somewhere. So these impersonation tokens allow an admin account to create an access token for a user that that user cannot themselves revoke 
And the idea here is that these can be used by these kind of automated systems that are set up by these admins um, to hook it up to, you know, internal tooling, that kind of stuff. Uh, fourth, we're going to ship API v4. This is an effort that started with 8.17. Uh, multiple people have been working on this. We shipped an API v4 beta in uh, 8.17 because we don't want to miss any of the things we want to put in that. Uh, for 8.9.0, it's actually going to be ready. It's got a bunch of... Um, you know, changes about the API structure to make it more consistent across the board. It's got some, um, some, some other changes that will just make it slightly more useful to use that are backward and compatible, so we cannot uh, just change them in V3. That's going to be with 9.0. Um, work is also continuing on geo disaster recovery. With 9.0, we expect to launch an alpha, alpha version, uh, and we are going to work with some select customers who want to kind of give it a try and see if we can, can find some um, issues that we want to iron out before this goes into a general availability. So with 9.0, we, um, we, we want to put this in front of customers and, and, and kind of make it more robust before we announce to the whole world that this is now a thing we support. Um, six is nested groups. This is something that pretty much was built by Dimitri, uh, our CTO himself, over the course of like two or three months. He started working on it a couple months ago, doing change, little change by little change by little change, because this is a really big change in GitLab to allow um, a nested, like groups that are nested inside each other, which means that all the routes have to change. The URLs will now include a, um, a variable number of like namespace paths. So you can have, for example, like GitLab slash marketing slash about.gitlab.com, for an example. Uh, and this has very, very big implications on the entire code base, which was never prepared for this uh, and now needs to be. But this is pretty much ready and we're just doing some la latest uh, last minute UI improvements, that kind of stuff. So that's definitely going to go in 9.0 and it's going to be a really, really awesome feature that customers have been asking for for a while. Um, so that's the 22nd. On the 7th, which is in about a week, we are going to start development with 9.1 because like we did last month, there's going to be a feature freeze on the 7th, which means that after that date, in the two weeks to, between the 7th and the 22nd, we're only going to add uh, regression fixes, security fixes, that kind of stuff. So all features for 9.0 need to be in by the 7th, which means that on the 7th, we will start on features and the like for GitLab 9.1. Um, the first thing we're gonna work on is numerous performance improvements. Um, we have these great performance dashboards which indicate like which endpoints are slow and what the 99th, 99th percentile is, which means that this is the time that like 1% of people um, see the this page is being this slow, and in some cases that means 23 seconds or more of, of load time of the shuts and endpoints, which of course is something we want to work on. Um, we were hoping to work on this a little bit with 9.0 already, but because we have so many breaking changes that we need to get out the door now, because if we don't, we will have to wait, you know, eight, nine, ten months or however long it will take to return till we reach 10-0. Uh, we wanted to get those first and then we will get to performance improvements if we have time. Chances are we won't have time for money of many of those for 9-0, but we will for 9-1 and we're gonna mark those as deliverable and we're gonna treat them like uh, you know, the, the high priority, urgent um, issues that they are. Um, of course, there's also going to be major features in 9.1. I don't exactly know what those are yet. I've yet to talk to Mike about those. Mike is our uh, PM for the platform team. Um, but I'm sure that's going to happen in the next few days. And then probably in the kickoff, which is going to happen on the 8th, uh, we'll be able to talk about what's going to go into 9.1 for the platform side of things. So that's the backend platform update. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask them now. I'm going to unshare my screen. Let's see if I can find the shortcut for that. I'm not seeing anything happen yet. Da, 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 da. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. Looks like it worked. Any questions? Anything that you were wondering about what's going on the platform side last five weeks, next five weeks? Anything like that? If there's nothing for 20 seconds, uh, I'm just going to quit the call and I wish you all a great day. 15, 10, Five. All right, great day, everyone. And I'll see uh, the ones who work at GitLab in the team call in 22 minutes. And everyone else is watching from home. I guess I'll see you in five weeks. Cheers.